Today, let's talk about Tether, because many mysteries are circling around this coin. Lots of rumors appear every single day about its suspicious connection to some dubious and frozen players in the industry. So let's dig deeper this time to see whether we can trust it. As you probably know, Tether or USDT is the major stablecoin in the game. One of the most powerful coins in the entire crypto market. USDT offers immense liquidity to investors, offering a safe hub for their crypto funds. Even though Tether has gained a good reputation now, its history is full of accusations of scams, fraudsters, and even crime. So let's go deeper. Tether is a stablecoin, which means that its value is always pegged to a fiat coin. It is very useful because it enables you to keep your funds in crypto and avoid regulations. So USDT is pegged to the dollar. So one USDT equals one USD. It works as follows. When you buy one Tether, you give one USD to the platform. And instead, one USDT is created and given to you. So a one to one ratio is achieved. But when you sell one USDT, you get your USD back and one USDT is getting burned. Again, one to one ratio is achieved. Even though you don't have USDT, you still will be impacted if Tether suddenly crashes. But why? Simply because Tether is the base for liquidity in the crypto market. Moreover, it is one of the biggest coins in the entire market based on trading value. So if Tether suddenly depacks or crashes, it will drag down the entire market of cryptocurrencies. If you believe that this is an exaggeration, just take a look at what happened when Terra, Luna and USD crashed. The crash of Terra sent the entire market down and it still has to recover from all the consequences of this crash. Like here, yeah, we know that Tether is crucial. But can we say that the project is honest? First of all, this is the company with the highest asset share distributed among its employees. And by the way, even though the company is huge and manages just billions of dollars, it employs only 42 people. Well, a magic number here? Well, okay, let's move on to other matters. So let's find out, is Tether transparent? So how does Tether peg its stablecoin to USD and what are the assets that back the stablecoin? Until now, it is not 100% clear, but on one hand, the coin shall be backed. If it wasn't, the peg wouldn't be impossible to preserve. And indeed, for ages, they insisted that USDT is back to USD one to one. But recently, they have added plenty of new assets. So what do Tether reserves look like now? As you can see, only 3.87% of the reserves are cash, those US dollars to which USDT is meant to be packed. The biggest part is in commercial papers, so it's over 75%. These assets are used to replace cash rapidly for accounting purposes and are most likely used by such huge companies as Apple, Facebook and Amazon because their cash flows are just immense. Since then, Tether updated their report where they show only 0.9% of reserves in commercial papers. But still, it means that Tether relied on commercial papers to back 50% of its issued coins. Tether claimed that its reserves were audited constantly. Well, it is a lie. Tether has always insisted that the company was constantly audited. However, there was not a single audit performed until 2020. Even Phil Potter, a Tether co-founder, told once that they could not be audited because they could not find a company that could perform such an audit. He explained it was due to the instability and ambiguity that surrounds the crypto market. However, this statement sounds strange because an independent auditor doesn't care about ambiguity or other things. He's paid to perform an audit and he does it. Moreover, 
there was an agency that was ready to conduct an audit even in 2018 before Phil claimed that nobody was ready to do it. It was Friedman LLP. But Tether rejected Friedman LLP services because the auditing agency used to follow its very detailed procedures. It was not okay for Tether. In March 2021, Tether hired a range of agencies to compile so-called consolidated reserve reports. Well, just a note, consolidated reports are not auditing reports. And by the way, do you know what exchange started using Tether first? Yeah, it is Bitfinex. Bitfinex is a cryptocurrency exchange such as Binance, Coinbase, you name it. So this exchange started using Tether before it was mainstream. But Bitfinex was founded by the same people who launched Tether, which means that they can just create USDT and buy with it on Bitfinex such cryptocurrencies as BTC, Ethereum and others without any oversight and rules. We shall remember that USDT has not always been backed and further, they can use the crypto that they purchase to issue more USDT and so on. So the circle closes here. They issued Tether to buy valuable crypto and they use the purchased crypto to issue more Tether. That's probably why Phil Potter used to reject any connections between Bitfinex and Tether. He claimed that these two companies belong to different people and are not connected in any way. But in 2017, it became clear that Tether and Bitfinex had the same co-founders, Phil Potter and Giancarlo De Vazzini. So do these two companies deserve your trust? Let's check in more detail. Bitfinex was founded by Rafael Nicole in 2013. Before he launched Bitfinex, he worked in the position of a technical specialist in a support team and used to spend the majority of his time on Bitcoin talk, studying crypto and scam schemes. Later on, Giancarlo De Vazzini joined him. And by the way, the latter guy was arrested back in 1996 because he was selling unlicensed Microsoft software and he had to pay a 65,000 USD fine. Further, Potter joined Bitfinex. And by the way, he previously was fired from Morgan Stanley. And now that we know more about Bitfinex's team of founders, let's have a look at who launched Tether. Tether was launched as RealCoin by Brock Pierce, Reef Collins and Craig Stellars in 2014. Brock Pierce was a former child actor in several Disney movies. He is known for escaping to Spain with Mark Collins' rector, a convicted sex offender. They both were tracked by authorities and arrested there. So come to my seminar! The life of your dreams is only good to see you again, George! You're under arrest! You gotta be, you gotta be joking! Like RealCoin was purchased by Bitfinex in 2014 and rebranded to Tether. The same executive team was managing both companies, which is a fact that was hidden and denied by all the team members. Later on, Paolo Arduino joined the Bitfinex and Tether teams in 2015. He worked as a fintech developer, but it became clear later that he also worked in the position of Dell Chain director. Dell Chain was a branch of Dell Tech Bank, a bank where both companies were clients. However, he was not the last suspicious personality behind Tether. Stuart Hogner joined the company later. Before that, he was a director of Ultimate Bet, an online poker company that was involved in a scandal because it allowed some players to see the cards of other players. When it came to light, Stuart Hogner left the company. All these people are behind one of the major liquidity providers in the entire crypto market. They have keys to over $66 billion. This information alone is sufficient to start doubting the stability of the source of this liquidity. Later, Tether applied for financial attestation. So Tether asked Friedman LLP to check their account in Noble Bank on September 15, 
2015. But on September 14 of the same year, they even didn't have a bank account there. After Tether had opened an account there, the next morning, September 15, Bitfinex transferred their $382 million. The financial attestation was conducted the same day in the evening. So Friedman LLP couldn't know that some hours before, this account was empty. Then the BTC price dropped by 40%. So Bitfinex used to sell its BTC reserves to get those $382 million needed for the attestation. In just some hours after the attestation, the biggest purchases in BTC history were recorded. So Bitfinex was purchasing its BTC reserves back. The next scandal happened some month after the attestation. The issue was that Bitfinex grew too rapidly and needed to use banking services. And yeah, like four bags of it. <laughs> it was difficult though to find a bank that would be willing to be involved in crypto operations. So they decided to collaborate with Crypto Capital, an offshore bank from Panama. The bank was known for being involved in several scandals, including connections with narco cartels. Crypto Capital was finally closed and its founders were arrested for their illegal activities with all its assets. As a result, Bitfinex lost 80% of its assets that were kept in crypto capital. So Bitfinex lost $80 million of clients' funds and couldn't provide funds withdrawals anymore. But they had reserves in Tether, in the equivalent of $400 million. So they continued to operate as if nothing happened, even though they had to prove that they are not bankrupt. Then they choose Deltec Bank. If you remember, Paolo Arduino, one of Tether's co-founders, was its former director. The bank issues a letter that is supposed to be proof that Tether is one-to-one -one bank. And immediately after the letter was issued and published, Tether transferred $475 million to Bitfinex to help them recover after the crypto capital scandal. So USDT lost its reserves and was not backed with anything anymore. So Tether didn't have the cash to back its coins, so the policy changed. The results? Well, in 2021, both companies were charged with illegal transactions and misleading investors and fined $18.5 million. Does it seem that this time Tether should have accepted the mistake? But no. Stuart Hogan makes a publication where he claims that nobody made any conclusions confirming that USDT was not backed 100%. But even this is not the end yet. When FTX crashed, the entire crypto market was shocked. And by the way, take a look at our detailed research here. So how FTX was connected with Tether the connection was via a small bank in Farmington, the USA. The probability that Tether's top managers used this bank in connections with FTX to transfer big sums of money all around the world is very high. Why so? Well, let's again have a look in detail. The FBA Corps chairman is Jean Chalopin, and he is also the chairman of Bahamas-based Deltec Bank, the one that provides services to both Tether and Alameda Research. And FBA Corp purchased this mentioned small bank in Farmington in 2020. And in 2021, the bank received permission to deal with crypto. About nine months later, FTX invested in a bank that had permission to deal with crypto. How did it happen? For now, it is unclear. These facts are provided not to scare people off, but rather to give some food for thought. And now, you know a little bit more about Tether, a major company behind the major stablecoin in the entire market. Because you know, the less you know, the better in crypto doesn't work this way. As always, don't forget to like this video and comment down below on what you think about this type of videos on our channel. So take care 
and see you soon.